But first, and speaking of Donald Trump, Anthony Albanese's captain's pick has blown up in his face. The Prime Minister stupidly insisted on making Kevin Rudd his ambassador to the United States. Foreign Minister Penny Wong reportedly warned him, don't do this. But Albanese ignored that and made his mate, his former boss's Prime Minister, the ambassador. And that's now turning into a political disaster. Because Rudd really is a megalomaniacal blowhard with a big mouth who once again has talked himself into strife. So we had Wong, who didn't want Rudd as our ambassador to the United States, and now we've got Donald Trump. He doesn't want Rudd either. We know that because Trump was asked in an explosive interview with Nigel Farage of GB News, an interview that will screen here tonight at 8.30, if he would deal with Ambassador Rudd once Trump becomes president after the November election, as polls suggest he will. Bang. Now they've appointed Kevin Rudd former Labour MP, I mean, he has said the most horrible things. You're a destruct, you were a destructive president, a traitor to the West, and he's now Australia's ambassador in Washington. Yeah, well, I don't know. Would you take, would you take a phone call he from won't, him? He won't be there long if that's the case. I don't know much about him. Uh, I heard he was a little bit nasty. Uh, I hear he's not the brightest bulb, uh, but I don't know much about him. But if, uh, if he's at all hostile, he will not be there long. Yeah, it's been so funny today to see the media left look all puzzled. What, 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 what? By Trump having a whack at Wacky Rudd. This on the ABC today was a classic. And it's quite, quite the statement. Uh, wow. It's another sign of just what a wild ride we're in for this year. So this is really just a personal attack on, on Kevin Rudd. Um, we haven't seen... You know, the backstory here in terms of anything that Kevin Rudd has done that has antagonised Donald Trump in this way. But as we saw when Donald Trump was pr uh, president, um, things come out of the blue. This came out of the blue. What's poor Kevin done to antagonise Donald Trump? Seriously, do these guys live in some bubble land over with Albanese or are they really totally unaware, unaware of what a rude fool Rudd has been? Because you might recall two months ago when Trump was on his way to becoming the Republican nominee for the November election for US president, I predicted exactly this. Another win today for Donald Trump in the New Hampshire primary. And Kevin Rudd should now get ready to pack his bags. And of course, Trump's rise must mean Rudd's fall. That's why Albanese was so wrong to pick Rudd. Trump back then, even then, had already nominated to be a candidate in the election was already looking a hot bet to win. And Albanese should have known that Trump could well be president again and Australia would therefore need an ambassador who could deal not just with President Joe Biden now, but also get on later with a President Trump. Be able to get Trump on the phone to ask for a favour for Australia. That's what you need from an ambassador. Someone like former Australian ambassador Joe Hockey, who was so mighty, mighty with Trump that they played golf together. And if that is what we need, that should have meant a hard no to Ambassador Rudd. Why would President Trump lift a finger for Kevin Rudd knowing how freely he'd smeared Trump around the world? Because here, let me show you, are some of Rudd's unhinged character assassinations of Trump in the years before he was appointed Ambassador. Donald Trump was a traitor to the West, said Kevin Rudd. Donald Trump was the most destructive president in history, a man who drags America and democracy through the mud and abuses Christianity, church and Bible to justify violence. In fact, he was mentally unhinged, Rudd told an ABC audience who loved it. I think the general consensus amongst uh, anyone concerned with the public policy process, domestic or international, uh, thinks he's nuts. Now, there was two problems with all this abuse, which is why Trump's reaction has most certainly not come out of the blue. The first is Rudd's lousy judgment. Trump can be erratic and volcanic, I know all that, but he is not nuts. He does not abuse Christianity to justify violence and is not a traitor to the West and definitely not the most destructive president in history. If you want someone destructive, just look at the old fool who's president right now. 
what he's done to America's borders, budget, economy, to the turmoil in the world. So Kevin Rudd, with his big mouth and his terrible judgment, actually helped to poison the world against Trump, which brings us to that second problem. Do you seriously expect a President Trump to come to the phone for Rudd? To rearrange his schedule, to squeeze in a call from a man who's vilified him like that? Well, former Labor Senator Graham Richardson, for one, today said, no, Rudd would have to go if Trump becomes president. I think it uh, would be in Australia's interest for him to be moved uh, uh, or recalled. We need uh, uh, an ambassador uh, who can ring and have the president pick up the phone. And if you're not in that category, then you shouldn't be in the job. But what's obvious to Richardson and to me is not obvious to the Prime Minister today. He just went off. Will the Prime Minister be re reassessing Mr Rudd's position as ambassador to our most important or, as Mr Farrell suggests, our second most important strategic ally. One of the things that I have never seen happen before in 28 years in this chamber is an attempt to politicise Australia's representative overseas in an important, in an important nation such Order. as that. A cheap shot question like that diminishes, diminish, diminishes the opposition. Order. Yeah, well, the problem here is that we've also never seen before an Australian ambassador in Washington who so viciously and publicly abused an incoming president, potentially. So what a dumb call it was by Albanese appointing this joker, even if he says, oh, look, uh, and Rudd's been a terrific ambassador. When or if Trump is president again, what then? I mean, do we keep... Kevin Rudd on to save Albanese from looking like a goose for choosing him? Or do we sack Kevin Rudd to save Australia from being a pariah in the White House? Which will Albanese choose? His country or his comrade? For him, it seems it's already been a tough choice. Like I said, watch the full interview that Nigel Farage did with Donald Trump. We'll screen it here at Sky tonight at 8.30. Do that because there are a couple of other important things that come out of this interview. It's, it's a terrific uh, viewing. One is that you'll see Donald Trump putting a big fat finger right on President Joe Biden's biggest and most bizarre disaster of the kind that many cowardly and blind politicians around the West are making as well, including here. It's immigration. Or in America, illegal immigration, to be precise. Biden has actually let up to 10 million people cross this country's borders illegally in just the past three years. Many from South America, of course, but also even Africa. People from as far away as China. Letting up to 10 million come in and letting more than 7 million of them stay. Now, 7 million illegal immigrants in the US under Biden, that is more than the population of Denmark, much more than of New Zealand. Think, just that many people, simply illegal immigrants in three years. Now, Trump, in his interview tonight, as usual, exaggerates and inflames the issues, but is absolutely right that this is a scandal and a danger. They've destroyed our country. Look, they've allowed... 15 million, probably, that's the number. 15, 15 million people. Million. 15 million people, that's my opinion. Some people say it's a little bit less. What difference? It's, it's bigger than most states. 15 million people to come in from prisons. They come from prisons, many of them. They come from uh, mental institutions and insane asylums, like Silence of the Lamb, Hannibal Lecter. I wonder if he's one of them. Uh, they're terrorists coming into our country, totally unchecked. Yeah, if you're one of the type that says, oh, I'm shocked by his language and exaggeration and saying 15 million is 10 million. If you're shocked by how he talks about it, be even more shocked by what Biden's actually done. Here is Biden before the election and his Homeland Security chief after it, almost begging illegal immigrants to come to America, boasting that they've actually destroyed many border controls.
I would, in fact, make sure that there is, we immediately surge to the border. All those people are seeking asylum. They deserve to be heard. That's who we are. We're a nation that says if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. So we have rescinded so many uh, Trump immigration policies, it would take so much time to list them. Joining me on Culture Wars is Rowan Dean, Trump watcher, editor of The Spectator, Australian host of Outsiders and Sky News every Sunday at 9am. Rowan, great to see you. <clears throat> it takes Sir Trump once again to call out something indefensible um, that many other leaders uh, around the world, many politicians, won't tackle, including leaders of European countries, who are also letting in waves of illegal immigrants cross their borders, land on their beaches. Now, like I said, journalists they, they might hate how Trump discusses this. But the greatest sin is by politicians who ignore this issue. Um, Andrew, yes, uh, I would actually take uh, issue with your claim that he's exaggerating. Uh, the number 15 million is merely an extrapolation uh, from the 10 million who they know about uh, and includes those that the Americans don't know about who cross over the border or undetected at night or uh, over places where they can easily get through. So there is every chance that it's not an exaggeration. But regardless, the point is that the numbers are simply staggering. And the proof of that is not the numbers themselves, but the impact this is having on cities throughout America, families throughout America, small town USA. They are reeling at the fact that uh, this number of uh, illegal immigrants are coming in uh, and the effects that's having draining welfare, uh, school halls are being turned over to uh, house them, uh, services are being diverted to them. You've even had uh, left-wing mayors in places, uh, Democrat mayors in blue cities like uh, New York and elsewhere saying they simply cannot cope. So the numbers are out of control. There's a neat little irony here with what you were talking about before, Andrew, that, of course, if um, Donald Trump and Kevin Rudd do get to sit down together, perhaps Kevin Rudd can explain to uh, Donald Trump how he did exactly what Biden has done. He tore up John <laughs> Howard's successful Pacific solution and he threw open the borders and he too saw uh, his, his uh, uh, prime ministership go down in flames because of that stupidity. The reality is, uh, Andrew, as always what appears to be exaggeration or hyperbole or anything else from Donald Trump tends to actually become the mainstream opinion within a short period of time. As you rightly pointed out throughout Europe, Europe is reeling under immigration. Uh, and the idea, the gag about Hannibal Lecter, et cetera, et cetera, well, we know here in Australia that the Albanese government has released uh, from detention illegal immigrants who number amongst them rapists, murderers, uh, pedophiles, so really, the, the Hannibal Lecter uh, tagline, amusing as it is, is not necessarily uh, incorrect. We also know that uh, uh, our own country is now seeing an increase in immigration. And all around the Western world, Andrew, it's the same story. Left-wing governments believe ideologically that there should be uh, more immigration, but more importantly, they believe that they get more votes out of higher immigration. So that's why they are unleashing this torrent of illegal immigration onto our shores and Americas and Europe's. Yeah, it's hard to believe otherwise why Joe Biden virtually welcomed it and why his chiefs are boasting about all the border controls that dismantled. I must say, in my 10 million uh, estimate, uh, based on official sources, it did include the getaways that uh, we're talking about, but 10 million, 15 right. million, the thing Good. is, okay. that yeah. is one awful... There's a whole country load of people come in three years... Illegally. I mean, it's just insane. But what else did you get out of the interview that we'll be screening tonight? Oh, it's a fantastic interview, Andrew, and it's a must-watch interview. Uh, apart from immigration, uh, he talks about the failures of Biden around the world, particularly as we've seen. Uh, what's great about the November 5th election is we literally get to compare the Trump administration years, the four years, with the Biden administration four years. That rarely happens in, in, in politics, and you then get to choose which way you want to go between them. Uh, we saw peace during Biden's, uh, uh, Trump's period of office. We've seen war during Biden's period of office. We saw uh, the Abraham Accords, a peace between Arabs and Israelis uh, that nobody ever thought would happen under did happen under Trump and is now being trashed under Biden. We saw the rearming of Iran, 
They've now got uh, close to having nuclear weapons uh, with all sorts of devastating consequences. That had been completely halted under Trump. So we've got, uh, he talks very clearly about, uh, now it's classic Trump, so he, he makes the claim, and we could say it's an exaggeration or not, but he does make the claim that under him there were no wars, under Biden there have been wars. He makes the claim that Ukraine would never have occurred and October 7th would never have occurred under his watch. I, for one, believe well, let him. Let me just play that, uh, Ron. Let me just the stop Iranians you for a with, I want to play money, that very billions grab. and billions of dollars going to Iran. I, I want to play that very to, grab sorry, and, and have you comment on it. I want to play that uh, because I've been worried by Trump's attraction to dictators like uh, Russia's Putin, China's Xi Jinping. Here's Trump trying to explain what's really going on with that and why he claims that he can just talk Putin into stopping the war in Ukraine. Not sure I believe it, but here's his explanation. Is Putin the kind of man we can negotiate with? Yeah, I think he is. Do you? So we did very well with him. Look, you know, I'm the one that was the one. I stopped the pipeline. Nord Stream 2. People don't realize that. You know, they say, I like, I like Putin. I got along with Putin great. I got along with President Xi great. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. Putin responds to strength. I don't know. I, I don't know what he responds to. He responded to me. I can tell you one thing. He certainly wouldn't have gone into Ukraine. No way. And he didn't. You know, people say, well, how do you know that? Even Democrats say he wouldn't have gone if I were president. You wouldn't have Ukraine. You wouldn't have had Israel. The attack on October 7th would never have taken place. Iran was broke. They had no money. I said, anybody that buys oil from Iran can't do business in the United States. And Biden comes along and he lifted everything. Trump getting on with Putin and Xi is no bad thing, he says, is it? Uh, it isn't, Andrew, because you look at what Trump does rather than what he actually says. And the reality was we had peace under Trump. We've had war under Biden. That's the bottom line. Look at what Donald Trump does rather than listening to every joke he makes or every exaggeration he may make. Scoreboard, scoreboard. Uh, Rowan Dean, thank you so much indeed <laughs> for your time.